Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome to Rayers 2, where you are the universe itself. Eternal. Alone. Bored. We're going to get to this in just a second here. Um, I just want to say before we start this, uh, it is really unfortunate that this game came out at such a busy time. Like, so many things that I was interested in released within a week of each other, and then Next Fest happened, and Alan Wake happened, and it's all just... I have such a backlog here. Um, but there was no chance that I was not going to get to this. I have loved every game that has come out of uh, Abbey Games, the studio that developed this. I loved the original Reus, like, very, very much. Uh, and so I'm really excited to, to finally be digging into this thing here. All right, so let's see. You are the universe itself. Until something different flashes into existence. It has many voices, but they all go by the name Humanity. They yearn for growth and excitement, brimming with ideas. How they want to build funny structures of stone and rival others. This is a good, good facial expression. This is, this is, this is not his spear. He just found this on the ground. He picked it up. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> Never seen th something like this before in my life. Or how they want to create a world in harmony with something they call nature. You hear many more ambitions. They turn to you for help. They call you nature. Their creativity excites you. You create elemental giants that can help you shape the world. And with them, you'll help these humans with their ambitions. This is a very human-centric uh, universe. And together, you start a new chapter. A chapter to fill the universe with life. Yeah, I mean, I'm basically, listen, I'm basically in for that. I knew that was going to be the deal. Choose a human spirit that will seed the destiny of this planet. Uh, so we have the sage. All plants gain 20 food. So I, I have not played this at all. I played the original Reus a lot. Um, it feels to me, if, if things still work the way they worked in the original Reus, it feels to me like 20 food is a huge bonus to give to every plant. Uh, people led by the inventor are creative and ingenious. All biotica with a base science yield gain plus 40% science if that biotica is unique in the biome. Uh, and biotica within the goddess's city border uh, within the goddess's city borders gain 50% the three main stats, food, biotica, and gold. Or you know what? Let's just random it. Let's just we'll, we'll let the game decide how we are how we are rolling here. So, I'll uh, put the difficulty on. Yeah, the game is balanced around this difficulty. Okay, show me show me how the thing goes. This is the only choice we have here. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, we have three giants. The forest giant, the ocean giant, and the rock giant. Familiar stuff for those of you who have played the original game. Um, these giants will be used to create, like, the terrain that we... Uh, that we allow the humans to construct their cities on, and the terrain will dramatically affect what kinds of uh, resources we have available to to give to our humans, to let them thrive, to try to help them thrive. Okay, so it looks like we got the goddess there. In Reus 2, every era starts with a barren planet. It's up to you to create a livable habitat for your humans. Your goal is to explore all fates of humanity by completing eras. Each era has its own set of goals. The more goals you achieve, the faster you'll unlock new content and mechanics. But before you pick an era, you must follow a planet's prologue. Follow the tutorial quest to learn the basics of the game. It's probably worth doing. Okay, so click on question mark buttons for info. Uh, now, I will say something that sticks out to me immediately uh, is that this is the mountain giant and this is the, the ocean giant from the first game. This forest giant is definitely a new design. I like it. I think I like it. Okay, so our first step here is to settle a city. Uh, to do so, select terraform planet. Yeah, we got to create a biome because right now everything is just sort of barren rock, not a very friendly place to build. Uh, and then click the nomad to start settling. Let's let's give them a nice forest, a nice foresty area. Yeah. Wait, how do I? This is a little grayed out. 
Hmm. Okay, the giants were not fully awake yet. I paused the game too early. Uh, I guess start it right here. Okay, you get to determine the size of the biome in this game. That was not the case in the original one. Okay, so we're going to make ourselves a little bit of forest. And you know what? Let's, uh, let's create a shoreline here. All right. Choose a location for the nomads to settle. We'll just, like, we'll put them down kind of near... Kind of near the water, potentially. Okay. City of Newwood Garden. Uh, so, the heart, this is the hearth of the goddess. It's got some basic resources. Uh, we're going to need to, to increase all of these numbers. Spend five something. Okay, hold on a second. Biotica are animals, plants, and minerals giants can place. Uh, cities collect resources from them. Creating a new bioticum uh, uses five eon. Interesting. Well, what do we have? Okay, thirty eon until the next uh, until the first era. Okay, so let's create a, a bioticum of some kind. Let's let's make an animal, perhaps. So over here in the forest, we can create a stoat or a rabbit. Stoats will give plus 20 money if adjacent to at least one other critter, and rabbits don't seem to have any rules. So let's put down let's put down a rabbit over here. All right, and then unpause the game so that it actually happens. So there are these little slots on the ground here. Just plug a critter in there, and then actually, it seems like just... Putting the stoat down right next to that is going to give you some, some good value. Alright, so we've activated the symbiosis bonus here. Which was a quest that I didn't even notice. I was just doing a thing that seemed obvious. Alright, to help the city, give it the resources it needs. Note that cities can only use Biotica that is within their borders. And we can see the edges of the city with the uh, little markers here. Okay, the city request, have three wealth. Well, this city has way more than three wealth uh, coming in now, now that these uh, now that these stoats have a 37 wealth output. So let's just let them catch up to their reality here. It takes a little bit of time for the, uh, for the city's wealth value to increase, it looks like. Okay, city has a level three wealth. We did it. Settle a second city and raise your Eon limit. Ah, okay. So as we as we continue to uh, to put stuff down, we're acquiring more Eon, and that's drawing more people. Let's uh, let's do a mountain thing now. To do something a little bit different. Oops, that's not the right button. Uh, I want terraform planet. Create desert. Okay, and there are other. There are other biomes that each planet can, uh, that each giant can create that seem to be uh, locked for the moment. Let's just create a little desert. And we'll set up a desert city next. Uh, different biotica will be available in different locations and I just wanna like experiment and see as many different things as we can. Okay, so choose a new tribe. Pirate Queen, who loves the high seas and gold, or a miner who's very interested in science for minerals. Yo, I didn't know that there were pirate that's a okay, we're gonna do the pirate queen one. So can the pirate the pirate queen can't settle Can't settle too close to a city and can't settle in ocean, but I'm gonna um I'm gonna hold off for a second here. We're gonna we're gonna totally do that, but first we're going to put down some territory over here for the Pirate Queen to settle in. You know what? Yeah, just hey, desert, desertify the rest of the world, would you? Right, 
we're gonna have her settle over here. All right, she wants to be next to the water. It's not a, it's not a ton of water. Can I, um, can I expand this ocean just like a little bit? Here, we'll go right up to the, right up to the edge of Newwood. It feels like they should have more water, right? Okay, there we go. We need some like proper deep ocean over here. All right, pirate settlement is also going to want wealth. First two completed level one requests will give you nomad charges to settle a new city and draft charges to unlock new biotica. Once two cities have their level one request completed, other cities won't be as impressed anymore and you won't get rewards when completing a level one quest. Okay. We're not going to worry about this idea of draft charges yet, but the game will introduce it to us as we're, as we're going on here. Uh, so... We can lay down some minerals in the ocean. The city's gonna want wealth. I'm trying, let's see what else we have access to here. Uh, herrings and clownfish. Clownfish like to be adjacent to sea anemones. Sea anemones can only be placed in shallow water. They output science and mystery. And we know the pirate queen we saw, she has a, um, a bonus for mystery, right? So let's, um, outside city territory. Uh, you know, let's, um, let's wait for the city to finish founding. There we go. Now we can place this. I guess we'll just put it right next to the city. Draft an apex biotica. Apex Biotica are much stronger than regular. Uh, you must unlock them through drafts. Use your draft charge to initiate a draft on the top of the screen. Go through the draft process to unlock the Apex Bioticum. They also unlock a set of Cohort Biotica. Okay, this seems like a complicated thing. Inspired by human creativity, the giants have ideas for new Biotica. It's like the biome for which you want to draft new stuff. I mean, let's, let's start with the ocean, right? Draft some ocean stuff. Uh, a white plumed anemone, which gets mystery and science for each distinct adjacent mineral, and unlocks red algae and coral rock, or tuna, which gets an awful lot of food and unlocks some food related stuff. Although the sucker fish gives you gold for each distinct predator, and this thing has the predator tag. I think I think we're we're more in this place. Let's go let's go for this white plumed anemone here. And then we're gonna probably change your plan. So this requires two of whatever this resource is. What is that? What is that called? Biodiversity. It requires two biodiversity. Each distinct bioticum present in the biome adds one per star rating. Okay. So you can see, we have, as you might imagine, we have access mostly to one star things. So this wants to be next to some minerals. Hey, ocean giant. Okay. Bedrock wants to be next to... Uh, wants to be next to plants, and it's going to give us biodiversity. Okay, so we have sea anemone being placed here. Let's put down some bedrock there. Get a little bit of uh, a little bit of symbiosis going, and then once we've done that, yeah, once we've done that, we have some biodiversity, and we can go ahead and place our apex in this position where it can be, or even in this position here, where it can be adjacent to this bedrock and potentially more things, because it seems like each thing gets four adjacencies, right? Yeah. This has a mineral booster on it. What, is it, what does a mineral booster actually do? Okay, bonus yields for the minerals. You know what, I think it's probably fine here. It doesn't need to 
have all of its adjacencies be minerals. Let's just put down our new our new thing right there. Right, what kind of stuff, what kind of other stuff do you have access to? Coral rock gives bonus if adjacent to a set of animal and coral. A gate is just money. I mean, that's not so bad, right? But, okay, so 10 science, 15, plus 15, if adjacent to some animal and some more coral. So what you'd want to do is put down coral here and here. And then we just put some, some deep water fish over there. So I'm, like, not even paying attention to the tutorial quests. I'm just, like, trying to... I'm, I see a thing and I have the opportunity to optimize it. And why wouldn't I just optimize the entire hell out of it? Okay. So this is outside the territory of the city. Like the, the city wouldn't actually benefit from this, but it will improve the coral that's already in the space. And then we're going to want a fish, some kind of fish. This wants to be adjacent to a sea anemone. This is just herring. Okay. All right, so uh, city requests. Complete a level two request. We were given a level two goddess village request immediately, have 15 prosperity and have more wealth than, this lady is over top of this thing here. Uh, so the pirate settlement is good. We're done with that. We can, we got it. We, we're getting a draft for it. Okay, we'll worry about this in a second. So keep the fundamentals of Radius 2 in mind. Use your symbioses. Symbioses. Uh, Apex Biotica are good. Use the project to efficiently create harmony between natures and humans. Let's talk about projects. When presenting you with a challenging request, the city will also suggest a project. Click the floating Inspire button. Pick one of the projects they represent and use the project to complete their, their quest. So the floating inspire button. The goddess village is the one that's... Here we go. Okay, we want to start a new project here in Newwood Garden, but we seek inspiration. Where should we look? So we choose an inspiration. Uh, Merchant Pier plus a lot of gold if there's ocean minerals within borders. We might be able to make that happen. The borders currently don't extend in that direction, but they could. Plus mystery and food if there are cat biotica on the planet. So just anywhere. I don't do I don't know if we know how to do cats. Uh bonus gold. There are two to three element biotica within borders, two to three, two to four gem biotica. I don't know if we know how to do gems either. Um, let's take, let's take the merchant pier. Oh, city borders are moving around. Okay, so be it. So, they extended the city borders east, not west. I don't know how we control that. I don't know if there's a good way to get them to extend west. Uh, but if not, we can just we can just ocean up some of this stuff if we have to. We can bring the giant over here and, and handle that in that way. All right. Uh, west Wilds on Sea can control a bigger area. This group has set out to add new patches to its city territory. Huh. Okay a city expanding unit so we can buy bonus eon at the planet shop find the planet shop right under the eon bar in the planet shop you can spend these things population unspent population is a that's a worrying way to refer to it technology and wealth uh, to buy extra tools for your planet the stat used is not consumed from humanity Okay, so it's more like um, it's more like you know these are these are like uh, caps more than resources that are spent. As you progress through the meta game, you'll unlock more options in the shop. But well, let's have a look at the shop. What does this mean? So it increases how much Eon is left before the current era comes to an end, 
or some other stuff that we can't interact with. Well, then I guess let's do this one. We'll do it. We'll do it with population. So there's like a, a certain amount of our population is devoted to that and can't be devoted to anything else. All right, spend all your Eon and complete the planet. A planet is completed once all Eon has been spent or when whenever you want in free mode. Prosperity is the final measure of how successful your planet was. Try to get as many of the following as possible. Completing challenge requests, completing village requests, and of course, raising prosperity in any other way you can figure out. The more you achieve, the more stuff you will unlock. Okay. They're using some terminology here in a way that's kind of unintuitive, but I, I get what they mean in part because I played the first game. All right, yeah, just uh, complete requests, try to do stuff. We, we will get five prosperity if we accomplish this. But accomplishing this in the first place requires the village to have 15 prosperity. As things stand right now, the village is reading as having nine. It's the sum of population, technology, and wealth. Ah, and plus three because we completed one request for them. I was going to say, nine is not, in fact, the sum of those numbers. But yeah, I see, I see. Okay. So. The goddess village wants prosperity and to have more wealth than the pirate queen. Well, that's probably doable. The, the pirate queen's city wealth is at... Four. So we just gotta drive this value up. And the merchant pier obviously would would help. Okay, so because of the goddesses, uh, the goddess bonus, we get extra gold and food for each mystery within city borders. I don't know if we can actually produce mystery here. Let's see, who can who can build stuff? We can make ash trees for more science, blueberries for more food. Um Redstone, which is five gold plus 15 science plus five gold if it's adjacent to a plant. I mean, quartz is a pretty good, just kind of general, pretty good general start here. These are only 10 each. I mean, we don't have to increase the wealth by all that much. We need prosperity more than anything. So it probably makes sense to put down some plants. Yeah, like, let's put down a blueberry here. Uh, because we want to be generating the largest amount of total resources. Oh, I was not looking at the right stones. Okay, so this mossigate wants to be next to plants. Okay, very similar stuff, actually. Alright, so adding these is gonna is going to spend 10 more of our Eon. So we have to be careful not to add too many sources before we're ready. And we don't quite have the resources to buy ourselves more Eon just yet. Oh, we have a third village here. So the sage wants to take care of its people and dry and tribe. It gets extra food and science for mystery. You just get raw food. All right, let's call the huntress. And we're going to have the Huntress settle just kind of like in the desert area. Okay, so that's the Huntress. This is New Wood Garden expo uh, expanding, which is good news for us. We need wealth or technology to get up one more point. So if we, here, let me, we have a draft on spent here. Uh, let's talk about a forest draft. Uh, apple trees get a tremendous amount of bonus food for each adjacent fruit. Pangolins, which are extremely adorable, get food and gold for each adjacent different type. So you want them to be near an animal, a plant. Okay, they also unlock bamboo and the palace cat which is a very adorable little critter and it has the critical cat tag we all we all know how important that is squirrels give not a lot of stats but they do give extra biodiversity which is cool and 
pear trees give extra, a lot of extra food if they're adjacent to some herbivores. Let's take the pangolin. So, can I get a little bit of... Can I, can I place this pangolin? Oh, hey. We hit nine, nine of other stuff. Uh, let's purchase a little bit more room underneath our era cap. Do we not have two biodiversity here? No, we do. I'm gonna replace the rabbit with the pangolin, I think. Or like, if we put the pangolin here, obviously like it's really valuable. Uh, maybe I wanna replace the stoat and then make this a stoat. Cause here the pangolin would be adjacent to all three types. So this would really drive the prosperity and wealth of this village up. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And it doesn't cost us a ton of Eon because we're going to need Eon to uh, to make the West Wilds people happy. They just want to have two animals within their borders. We can, we can make that work. Okay. So rabbits are just kind of whatever. But we want, we want stoats here. Oh. Hold on. Stoats get plus 20 uh, money if they're adjacent to at least one other critter bioticum. And I, in my head, had just been like, you know, a critter, like an animal. Rabbits are critters. Rabbits have the critter tag. The pangolin actually doesn't. So... This moss agate is, is a gem. So a palace's cat next to this would be good. But actually, maybe we just want to leave this as a rabbit. Because a stoat next to a stoat that isn't next to a critter is actually kind of crummy. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel that order. Don't do that. Come over here and do something else instead. Give me a desert animal. Uh, sand cats love to have a critter around as well. Jerboa is a critter. You know that seems like a pretty straightforward play there. Okay, the rabbits the rabbits get to stay. Is a plant booster here as well. So we'll throw down these guys. There we go. Two animals. So what is it that causes population? It's just a raw food amount. So if we come over here and we place a sagebrush Sagebrush is barren. It counts as an empty slot. That's interesting. But if we do this, it'll dramatically increase the output of the Jerboa. Yeah. Which we're going to need. So hold on. This isn't a food booster. It's a... Or this isn't a plant booster. It's a food booster. Um, I could... We could just put down another... Jerboa, actually. Oh, the Jerboa doesn't want... He wants a, a mineral, not a plant. What am I doing? What am I thinking? Hey, you. Come over here. Um, how about you place that, and you... Is there a cancel button? Just, like, move over to here. I don't actually want you to put down the thing that I said. Okay, so this should generate... We'll generate some bonus food from the Jerboas. I should have put the Jerboa down here in the first place. But okay, so now these Jerboa are providing extra resources. I don't think it's going to be enough to get the population to three. And if we put down another resource... Huh. West Wilds on Sea agreed to export modest earrings to Newwood Garden. There's trade occurring. Oh, also there's this, right, a project. They would love a project. Um, bonus food if there's fish biotica around, and we have some. 
seven or 15 mystery if there's three or four distinct ocean biota come within borders. I think that's already true, right? Eureka. Yes, you will build an ocean shrine and it will provide you so many resources, like a crazy amount of resources. Cause yeah, there are there are definitely a lot of distinct ocean biota come around here. So yeah, that's providing the full 15, which means this city is gaining prosperity very rapidly. What is what are the numbers that we need to reach for okay, we can buy a little bit more Eon Cap with population here. And that means that over in this city we can put down another Jerboa, which would be fairly strong on top of the food thing. That should allow us to complete this request. Right, it should be it should be like just enough food. Alright, cool. So, a little bit more prosperity there. Uh, oh, we have another draft. Uh, I guess let's do a desert draft. We've seen one of each other thing. So limestone, which counts as an empty slot, loses science for adjacent minerals and has plus one micro slots. This is a mechanic that's not been introduced to us yet. We'd also get fan palms and rattlesnakes or lapis lazuli and topaz, which just like play very well next to each other. Yeah, let's go this way. That said, I think we are probably at this point going to run out of ways to expand our, our cap. So when we put down one more thing, it's going to finish, it's going to finish the region or it's going to finish the era, right? I guess let's just go ahead and do it. Um, so we need food here. We need 12 more food within borders. This is plus 50%. So like there are minerals in the biome. There's minerals over here. So I think this turbo will just be active. But when we put it down, I think it's I think it's gonna finish our era if I'm understanding these mechanics correctly. Yep, the time has come. The first era is upon us. Okay, so select your next era from the options unlocked by hum uh, by humanity. We could have a calm era. Humanity advances to the next era but with no particular inspiration or goal in mind. It just allows you to focus on whatever prosperity. The Calm Era is always available. Uh, each era has an era quest, a condition, and some effects. The Calm Era has no additional effects, and it has the era quests to just make settlements and get prosperity. Pretty straightforward, kind of boring. We could have ourselves an Iron Age, which is a little bit more difficult. Get, get to 10 technology, have four minerals, and this unlocks iron, and the Pirate Queen will build a Great Forge, which multiplies the science of all the minerals within the borders. Uh, we could go for a Monument Age. The Pirate Queen feels it. Civilization on this planet starts with them. Uh, so we have to build up prestige for that city. The Pirate Queen has eight wealth. This is a quest? Just, I mean, get her to eight wealth, I guess. And we start the construction of a monument, which gives gold for each city on the planet that is smaller than the Pirate Queen city. Right, that's kind of interesting. A Neolithic revolution. Man, you get a lot of, a lot of options here. Um, we invent farming, you know, the, the agriculture. So we can have this because we had at least two cities with three population. We can do this because we had a lot of wealth. One city must have at least three technology and two minerals. Okay, interesting. So five unique plants on the planet. Like these quests seem quite easy. 
to me. Uh, we can't do an Age of Philosophy because technology was not the planet's highest, highest stat. Well... Up to three existing cities will build an extra farm, getting extra food from plants. We're super incentivized to build plants. Like, yeah, confirm. Plants. Okay, so we've moved into our first era, and this is the last era for this world, right? So we are, we are going to be done after this one. We're done with this, this particular game. Uh, Raiders 2 has a lot of mechanics and nuances to learn. Super excited to hear it. And it would be impossible to learn them all at once. Instead... Learn them at your own pace. Most important thing, everything has tooltips. Great. Okay, so. Yep, just spend all your Eon, complete the planet. All right, Neolithic uh, Revolution, quest number one. Have three cities with three population. We're already there. Have more types of plants in the world. And we did complete the... Um, the pirate village quest, the, the Jerboa was enough food, so we're going to get a draft from that. So let's go ahead and take that now, and I'm going to go for a desert draft, I think. I think our, our desert city feels like it's still sort of the weakest. Okay, we're getting the limestone. This gives us a new pretty good kind of plant to put down, which I'm excited about. So, let's get a couple more plants. <laughs> Forest Giant is, like, rocking out with humanity. Like, look what a great job they're doing. All right, do you want to start a project? Uh, a fishing hut probably doesn't make a lot of sense here. Hunters and trappers are both very reasonable. Let's, let's go hunter. So be it. So we just have to, uh... Just have to produce another animal to get another 40 food here, which is really going to drive the value of this place up. Okay, so. The high value stuff that we've unlocked here. Lapis Lazuli wants to be near gems. Limestone really doesn't want to be near minerals of any kind. So this, this right now is redstone, which wants to be adjacent to a plant. And this wants to be a biotic adjacent to a bioticum that has gold as its base, which redstone does. So yeah, we'll just put this down here. That's fine. We don't care that it's outside the borders of the city that we're not getting like optimal value from it. And then you can come over here and start working on these things. Like um, we can put a limestone down right here, so it has a you know limit its adjacencies, so it has an easier time. Uh, staying full because it does produce 75 science on its own, which is a lot of prosperity. And then we'll need to put down another new kind of plant somewhere. We'll do it. We'll do it probably in the ocean. Okay, so this doesn't want to be near other minerals. The other kind of mineral wants to be near gems. So yeah, that's all fine. Uh, we have animals that want to be near minerals. These rattlesnakes want to be near critters and predators, and they are critters and predators. So that's interesting. Um, but let's stay a little bit focused here. Uh, plants and... We need to expand some things. So, um, oh, Newwood Garden. Newwood Garden has this farm now. Undergrowth Biotica, interesting. Okay, border boosters motivate the city to expand their borders. When there are more positives than negatives, they will send people out. Okay, so there's, there's kind of like a, a size cities are happy to be in each era. What do these buttons do? Okay, this shows all the, the projects. So this city could still be earning a lot more money uh, if we put down some minerals over here. Okay. So this produces mystery, and this city benefits quite a lot from mystery, right? Yeah.
Okay, there's sorry, there's a sea anemone already. So you want to be adjacent to a biotic,um with base food, which herrings have. Okay, so if we put that over there, that'll be our fifth type of planet, or our fifth type of plant on the planet's surface. So that'll solve that. Okay, let's go to the city requests here. They want more population, which means they need more food. They have enough animals in theory, but we need to just do whatever's going to produce more food. And generally speaking, rocks, not so much. So I do believe we're going to want just more Jerboas. Honestly, like the city does not, we do not currently have a lot of ways of providing food to a desert village. So it's just going to be a lot of Jerboas. All right, uh, Great Cities of Old requires us to get three cities with six population. This city is currently on five. We're gonna push that through pretty quickly. The Huntress is inventing something new. What does this mean? I mean, our technology is certainly growing quickly. Hmm, I don't know what that means. Oh, inventions. They're inventing a new luxury. Okay. Huh. And you get trade routes at certain wealth thresholds. So, like, if we were to go over to Pirate Queen Town, they have invented modest earrings produced from coral. And they are... They are trading... They have a slot open. They were trading with... Yellow. I mean, it looks like they're still trading with yellow. There's a marker on this. But okay, we're learning. One thing at a time here. Uh, so, quests. Uh, this city also needs... West Wilds on Sea also needs, like, a little bit more food. Well, I mean, we could put down another another Jerboa. It's certainly not a challenge. And that would, that would get us to six population for this. The Jerboa is in tremendous... Tremendous demand right now. Okay. So, Goddess Town wants to have more wealth than the Huntress and generally wants to have a lot of prosperity. We still have some biomes. Or some, uh, some slots open here. So, we'll get some bonus gold for, for putting down some minerals. So, let's, let's get ourselves some decent ocean minerals. The Jasper wants to be near an animal. The Bedrock wants to be near a plant. And the Coral wants to be near an animal and some coral. So if we put down some Jasper here, and then Coral, Coral, and an animal, uh, that should that should satisfy a lot of our needs. So give me a herring. That'll produce a ton of extra resources for this village. And it will uh, will meet all of our requirements for the merchant pier. Okay, you're going to put down coral there. West Wild's Fountain has invented stew. That's their luxury. Hearing placement ever actually occur? I don't think it did. All right, the borders are getting pushed out here. So the merchant pier is now producing a hundred gold. All right, that should have the coral turned on. It looks like actually no, it's not. If adjacent to a set of animal and coral. But isn't it? It's hmm. It's not clear to me why that's not working. Okay, the planet will conclude in five eons. We did all of our quests. We we, we have won the the era and well under the uh, the threshold we are looking for here. For completing your first 
four level three quests, she'll gain two of whatever this is to upgrade your slots and place higher level Biotica. Interesting. Okay, so we can probably buy ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. Okay, there we go. So this Huntress Village, we can accomplish this quest by just getting... And we get ourselves a little bit more scoring prosperity by just getting a little bit more food. Hey, y'all, I have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea for how we might accomplish this. What if, uh, what if Jerboa? Yeah, let's, uh, let's just place another Jerboa, I guess. Or should I be, should I be focusing more on trying to make sure we get a level three quest finished? Because I do kind of want to see what that, what this exactly is, this resource. So Newwood Garden has hit, uh, has hit a pretty high amount of total resources. We're getting maximum benefit from our merchant pier. Our farm is still not fully going. So we need like more blueberries, more things with the undergrowth tag. But we would have to gain nine more, nine more points of something. It feels like a tall order. If the coral was working, we'd be in, we'd be in better shape on this for sure. I'm not, not sure a set of animal and coral. So I had interpreted that as being adjacent to an animal and some coral. Clearly that's not the case. Does it mean my coral, my coral over here is also not totally, no, this one's, this one's turned on. Yeah, adjacent to a set of animal and coral. And it's the same situation here where they're they're adjacent to a herring. Huh. Oh, the the herrings did just get placed. I mean, but it should still be turned on. I'm not I'm not clear on why this isn't working. Okay. So we have 10 more 10 more era to just try to get whatever prosperity we can. I don't think we can get this. Uh Pirate Town going from 8 wealth to 25 is really pretty unreasonable. I guess yeah, we want to work on Hunter's Village cuz it's the only thing I think we can do underneath our era threshold. So it's time for some Jerboa. Woo. I can see the villagers talking about the things that are important to them. Everybody loves Jerboas and stew. Exploration, just kind of like mapping the world. The ocean giant. Hey, check it out. The ocean giant's here again. That's pretty weird. Okay. That's going to get us close. And then we put down one more Jerboa. And this will get us this will get us five more prosperity. That's that score that counts for something. Plus burrow. Oh right, this burrow is the name of their symbiosis. Okay. All right, we did it. Five more one more thing and another unlock. Wait. 20 population, 10 wealth. Yeah, these these level three quests are really, really big. Uh, I guess let's pull some more ocean stuff. The other the other ocean thing. Okay. And with that, we're certainly nowhere near the thresholds for shop uh, buying anything from the shop again. So let's just place one more. Uh, Place one more thing and be done with it, I guess. Uh, this seems like a good a good way to go out. Or like, do we we don't have a place where we're adjacent to a gem, or where we even really could be adjacent to a gem? This Jasper is worth a bunch if it's next to an animal, which over here it wouldn't be. 
Yeah, okay, red redstone is 25 points of resources. I think that's fine. We'll put that down. That won't uh, that won't change our level of prosperity at all. But it will be a nice fit. It will just it will feel nice to have it. All right. So let's see what com concluding our first planet has earned us. Hold on. Let's let them let them get their resources. Woo! Seven technology. Okay. Conclude. Westwild's Fountain invited tribes from around the world to host the world's first farmer's market. That doesn't feel like a thing you need the whole world for, but I guess, I guess it's cool. It's sort of, sort of a momentous thing. So we three-starred a Neolithic revolution. You got this bio bonus for having three distinct biomes with at least four biodiversity. The more unique biomes you use, the higher the reward. Okay, so as we unlock more biomes, obviously we'll have, we'll have the ability to benefit from this more. And then we earned 85 from like quests and stuff. Okay, so 94 prosperity. What does this mean? Okay, so each star unlocks new new apex bioticum, I guess. Cool. So what did we learn about here? Antimony. Plus 30 science for each distinct adjacent mineral and tin and white willows. Okay, interesting. Ostriches, adorable. <laughs> they need a little bit of space to run around. Uh, sand grouses. So yeah, that's right. There's, there's a bunch of things that have this barren tag that make them count as empty slots. And I was wondering, hey, what's the value of that? But now we see the value of that is ostriches at the very least. Also mud cracks. In many ways, you wouldn't even think of this as an element itself, but there we are. And the ocean thing that we've learned about is pearls. Wow, 60, so 80 money total if adjacent to the coast. Uh, and these unlock with Jasper and Secret. So it seems like some of the um, some of the cohort stuff is shared between different Apex Biotica. All right, I think we've done some good work here. We've unlocked some stuff. Our profile level has gone up. Uh, this is what we're really doing with the with the prosperity. Humanity can get to a second era, so you're going to have more complex games. A whole new rank of Biotica has been added. And let's not forget the Swamp Giant. Okay, so you bring a you bring a giant of each type, plant, animal, and thing. And then, okay, Swamp Giants can create the rainforest. Uh, has a focus on biodiversity. Cool. This is rad, man. I'm... I'm so happy to be playing more Reus. All right. And there's our adorable little planet. We can just revisit it at any time. But, you know, when you come back next time, this is the, in our next episode, we got we got whole new things to try. So that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we're going to we're going to be playing a bunch of this. I am I am super uh, in love with this thing already. Uh, so when you come back next time, a second planet featuring a second age and all kinds of new stuff. At least one ostrich. That's definitely a goal for me. And we'll see you then.